All right, guys, as you can see by all this snow, we are back in New England. And the first problem we need to take care of on this thing is we need to fix these wheels. So we're gonna throw the old ones back on there right now, get these off the powder coat. To recap, I mean, the truck did great, you know, on this trip, it did 6,000 plus miles. It was awesome. But I want to fix these wheels. Got the S pod in, so I want to get that on. Keep this thing going. So yeah, let's get these bad boys off. And just like that, boys, with the process of movie magic, we're back to the old red wheels. I do love these wheels, minus the uh, the powder coat coming off, but the red just looks so sick with the gray. But everyone's doing it now, you know? Gotta do something different. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on wiring these bad boys up. I got a plan for that. I'll show you right now. All right, guys, I'm talking about it. Here is the S-Pod. So, there's a bunch of reasons I went with the uh, more expensive S-Pod than some of the other options. This is the S-Pod Bantam, which is a little bit different than like their traditional one. Um, this one is programmable, so you can do like certain things, like say you want to, um, you know, when you hit the unlock button on your truck, you could have like your fog lights come on or your, your rock lights or, or puddle lights or whatever. Um, so you can do stuff like that, which is nice. You can like program like strobe and different stuff like that. The thing about this is um, it's made here in the US. So, you know, unlike those Chinese companies that they don't care, you know, if your trails are open here in the US, they don't care about local off-road scenes. These guys do, you know, they're, you can call them up, you have a question, you can get them on the phone. Um, you try to get like Amazon on the phone, good luck with that. But it's a little bit more expensive. I feel like it's worth the money. They were the ones doing it first. Um, they stand behind their product. The reason, one of the big reasons um, I went with this is because you can actually run multiple keypads off of this. So for instance, you have one of these leads, it plugs in there, plugs into this, you can, I'm gonna have this one in the cockpit of the truck, and then I could have another one in the build out of the go fast, which eventually I'm gonna to get to, but more on that later. So you could have, you know, um, your fog lights and your scene lights and stuff like that. And you say you're in the back, you're cooking dinner, and you wanna like illuminate, you know, it gets dark, you push a button, it goes on in the back, same with the front. So that's kind of nice. That's a, a nice feature. They also offer this with uh, toggle switches, which take up like a lot more room. And then they have a like a LCD screen that is cool too, because um, you can like program stuff around and do different things. But with this one, you actually get you know the feel of a button, which is nice, um, and it's like a smaller size. I also just like the aesthetic of this compared to the other two. I feel like um, off road too, it's gonna be easier to hit these than to like look at the little LCD and do that. So this one's gonna get mounted in the cockpit. Like I said, I'm uh, probably gonna do another one in the future. So yeah, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll do like everyone else does. We'll just mount this to the um, the fuse box cover. It has these little, these feet and you can just screw it into there. So that'll be easy. And yeah, we'll get going on this. So stay tuned for more of that. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is get the control cable through the firewall. Now what I've done is I took some Tessa tape, which a lot of people use for like electrical uh, bundling and stuff like that. So they use only a lot of factory OEM harnesses. And I just taped over that connector to just kind of protect it. So on the Tundra, I'm gonna do my best to show you this. This up here is... So as I was saying before the battery died, that's where the main harness comes through the vehicle. So if you peel this back here, hopefully 
you can see this. Maybe you can't. Okay, so if you pull this back here, there's a hole right here on the bottom of this harness, on this, um, this boot. So this is an empty rubber hole. And what it does is it goes to a, like a nipple on the back side about this long, like part of the rubber grommet. So you just take a screwdriver like this and you shove it through that hole and it pushes the nipple out. And then you just leave the screwdriver there and you just cut that nipple off. And then that gives you an access hole through. So it's kind of complicated, um, but it's also super easy at the same time. So there's some other videos showing this online. It's pretty hard to show unless you have it really well lit and a camera guy. So anyway, I'm gonna get that wire through. Okay, so we got that through. Don't mind all this rat's nest. I'm gonna cut that out. So took the uh, fuse box cover off. I'm gonna mount the S-Pod to that. Sorry for this outrageous. There we go. I'm gonna mount the fuse box to the S-Pod to that, get that back in, clean up all this wire, and be good to go. How many stray wires there are. <laughs> I think like most of us, I hate wiring. It really is a pain in the ass. And I feel like it's something I always skimp on. And I'm always rushed to do it. I never have time. I don't know if that sounds like you guys or not. But if it does, call 1-800. 665-4444, get an s bar it'll be awesome, it'll make life easy, it will get you laid, probably won't get you laid, probably not, especially if you wear those overland pants, those are never going to get you laid guys, I hate to tell you, they are tactical though, they are tactical when you're on mission or on route, you guys are on comms, those pants are sweet, but girls don't dig them. All right, cool boys, that's on there. Sorry about my rant about Overland pants. Um, so yeah, I gotta clean this stuff up. So I'm gonna do that, and then it's gonna be bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so now we're onto the Baja designs. Ignore these covers. These are the uh, amber covers. I was gonna go with those, but everyone's kind of doing it. Plus I kind of like the look I got going on now. So this is what I got for a wiring situation. And I'm going to dive deep into what nobody seems to be talking about on the internet when you run the Baja LP6 or the LP9. Especially if you want to do what I'm doing with an S-Pod, you have to wire it a very uh, specific way. So this is a kit, it's called the Lockout Kit, I believe. If it's uh, something different, I'll, I'll put it in the description. This is for guys that are running, you know, an S-Pod or a Switch Pro or something like that. So it comes with two relays. You got two plugs for your lights. You have a ground. And somewhere else in here. Then you have, uh, this goes for your uh, DRLs. So what this does, it allows you to have it on one switch. So you can hit this switch and it will all come on. So there's a high and a low beam for some reason, which in my personal opinion, I think is kind of dumb because you can't run these on the street. So why do you want a high and a low beam? Why wouldn't you just want them on all the time, like full power, which I'm sure that's how a lot of people do it. But if you do it without the relay and you hit that switch and it's on one switch and the high beam comes on, all, bore, all full bore at once, you damage the circuits inside the light apparently. So this kit allows you to do that without it really affecting it. So I got one kit for the two outer lights and then I'm gonna have the other third light on a different switch. So I hope that makes sense to you. It barely makes sense to me, but that's what we got going on. So 
Now I'm gonna get this stuff run. It's kind of a lot of wire that I don't really need, which which sucks. And uh, if I had more time and was less lazy, I could probably make my own harness. And if you're good at uh, wiring and that type of stuff, you can buy all these connectors. And you can actually buy like the different lengths from Baja Design and get some like high grade uh, relays and you can do it yourself. But like I said, I'm lazy, so this is what I did. Calm down before you stress up the groove. The energy a little different when the blessings accrue. Hey, who you talking to? Just know I ain't no regular fool. Could be anything in the world, but I can never be you. Because I stand tall like I'm on my tiptoes. Baby, you think a little too small. I got big goals, baby. Hey, where the money at? Look, I just need the info. Pronto, I go and get it. Split it with my kinfolk daily. And I'm the type of that might change my number on you. Yeah, that's how you react when people took the slumber on you. Pretty brown skin, baby, I can see the summer on you. You see all the bread, and I know it make you wonder, don't you, don't you, don't you? Ooh, I ain't surprised at all. Seen them rise so for the s bar guys, I ran the wire up through the dash, poked out one of these auxiliary switches that we wasn't using, and mounted the whole switch panel right there. It's perfect because it's right in front of the shifter. I can get to it really easily. It looks super clean. I have all the lights, the back lights on it set to orange so it matches all the interior lights. Really looks good, so pretty happy with that spot. All right, boys. There is my install for the wiring, the S-Pod and the lp -9s. So what I did, to kind of recap, because it's complicated, and nobody seems to talk about it on the internet, is uh, I got the Baja, I mean, I got the uh, S-Pod Bantam, and then from Baja, I got what's called their uplifter harness, and basically that's for the LP9s and LP6s to run off an S-Pod. Because normally what you do is you'd have a three-way switch. Um, with the LP9s, you can't, r you can't just put all the power at once because there's a high and a low beam so you have to turn one on and then the other so that's what those relays back there are for so goes to those goes to the s pod and uh that way it won't mess anything up but uh you know i'm obviously not the best at describing wiring because i hate wiring like everyone else you know i'm not an electrical engineer i just play one on youtube so uh, i did however meet one funny story just the other night this is an electrical engineer working with Akon to build Akon City. So, you know, small world here, guys. Small world. But anyways, this is wrapped up. So I'll get some footage of these on at nighttime. So let's do that. Oh, yeah. I went too hard for it. No, I need it. Beat it, for You mess up the mood. Yeah. Ooh, I went too hard for it. And I need it. So please don't mess up the mood. Alright boys, so now that we got those done, we need to deal with some problems with the go fast. Stuff that we're not really used to coming from a ground, I mean a rooftop tent. So let me show you the first problem. First problem, boom. Now that we have a go fast. It's so compact, you can't leave your sleeping bags up there. So, something to think about if you're interested in one of these, can't leave your sleeping bags up there. Or pillows, or pretty much anything, really. So, we're gonna fix that problem right now. All right, so to fix that problem, we're gonna use this product right here. This is actually kind of a cool story. This is made by a dude that's from Maine and now lives out west. I forget where, sorry bro. Uh, the name of his company is Vernacular. And he makes uh, a bunch of accessories for the Go Fast. He has some pockets that go in here and here and you can store a bunch of stuff, really cool stuff. But this is his like sleeping bag hammock storage thing. So it's gonna mount up to these, these rings that I already have in place. It does ship with this style ring that threads right into the go fast but I already had these ones these are kind of cool uh, you can get them in chrome and black I think they look a little bit nicer I found them on Amazon pretty cheap so uh, yeah let's get this easy install done Thank you. 
All done. It has these extra bungee cords here, so you can even put like a jacket or something up in there. So pretty sweet, nice product. I like to support local Maine guys, even though he's not really local anymore, but he's still from Maine, so that's pretty cool. So check him out, guys, on Instagram. I'll put the uh, the link down in description. Down, 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 down. Okay, so the next problem with the Go Fast. Let me paint a little picture here for you. So you're driving on the highway, tired, you're on a long trip, you can't find a campground, you pull into, say, a rest stop, a Walmart parking lot, and you want to stealth camp. So you have all this space to do so, no problem. Well, that's where you're wrong. The problem lies here. When you pull this down, there's no way of latching these. Or, also what can happen is someone can come on the outside and latch them, and then you're locked in back here. Real embarrassing. So, this is a product, and I forget the exact name, uh, something design, John design, something, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll link it down below. But what this does, this bolts on here, and then latches onto this part of the frame. So now you can lock yourself in here, nobody can get in, no bad guys can come and take your stuff. Uh, so, you got that. Also, what it does is it blocks the latch from latching. So, you're not going to get locked back here. You're going to skip out on a real embarrassing moment. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool little product. So, let's get these on. Nice and secure. So yeah, now you can, you can hang out here. You don't have to worry about the threats of the road. You can bring a date back here, you know? It's nice, look at set the mood. You know, when you're in a truck stop. You know, just have a good time. So yeah, now all we're doing is just waiting for the, uh, the wheels to get back from powder coat. We'll get those back on. Hopefully they're all the same color this time. We'll be good to go. And just like that, boys, it's been a fortnight. And as a fortnight comes, it brings new wheels. <sighs> just kidding, the powder coat guys, they got it done. Shout out to you guys, you guys are the real heroes. So, we got the wheels all fixed up. So, let's get these old ones out of here. Actually, one of you guys is getting those. One of you guys is putting those wheels on the Tundra. Not the tires, but they bought the old wheels. They're going to redo them. I don't know what color they're going with, but I'm sure it's going to look sick. So let's get those off. Let's get these on and let's get going. It's a leaky beat. I can't take much more of this. <laughs> guys, I'm kidding. What do you think? I'm going to make you watch me change the wheels again? This ain't tire rack. Okay, guys, it's done. It's done. You guys don't want to see me change wheels. This isn't that type of show. There it is, boys. As you can see, it's still a little dirty from uh, last weekend's boys trip activities. So I'm going to get this thing washed. And then we'll get some shots of what this thing really looks like. But whew, glad to have that orange right. That looks good. Put a trigger, then my flesh had to duck and run. Cutting things straight, sitting up on my brain. Now I'm coming for my head, tight like Ichabod Crane. How I'm even walking straight if I ain't got no spine? I was like Sleepy Hollow, then my spirit came alive. Standing at the pool of blood, Jesus told me take a dive. Now I'm climbing Jacob's ladder, I just wanna touch the sky. Hopped off the body bag with a new set of grace, man. They call it Alright, boys. That's pretty much it for the Tundra series here. I think we're gonna leave it alone for a while and just enjoy it. But I love this truck, man. 
it's been great to me i bought it brand new been all over the place with it so haven't had any problems i'm gonna keep riding it for a long long time i think uh maybe one of the next things that we will we'll do is address some sort of storage solution in the uh go fast which like also has like a seating platform or something so have like something that goes like this it's like a bench and then maybe folds out into like a second bed for when we have guests over but yeah besides that there's not much else i want to do to this truck it's great for what it is for you know pretty good at off-road you know it gets into some tight spots but besides that it's great camping and stuff it's awesome so that's it boys we're gonna get on to some next projects the next video we have this thing out in some deep deep snow it's pretty awesome so stay tuned for that keep watching boys